Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to A Random Moment with Pastor David Unfiltered. You know, Pastor, uh, July 26, we celebrated 41 years, and we did a we, we did a, an unfiltered regarding this. But, you know, recently, it, it seems like as we hit the 41st year mark at our church here, uh, just looking within our church, there's some amazing and great things going on that, uh, for me, has been very, very very blessed. I mean, we had our our Fourth of July baptism. Uh, we had our 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 forty first uh, anniversary celebration. Different things going on, Pastor. With the within the forty one years, it's just been for me. It's just been an amazing experience. Yeah. And uh, and you know, I was thinking about this even before we came on camera here, thinking about just some of the and for the people that attend our church you'll see this, you know, the, 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 the great work the Lord's doing here and the Lord's doing great works in other churches, of course, but because it, this is our church and this is our program, I wanted to share a little bit, get your feedback a little bit that, you know, 41 years is not an easy accomplishment. Uh, and, you know, unfortunately there's been, uh, some churches that haven't been able to last that long. And yet God's been gracious in our ministry here that we're able to push through and, and move forward and you know pastor looking back at these 41 years and and seeing the lord doing amazing work here does that does that excite you in a, in a way where you're like wow the lord still continue to do a work here and and continuing to i mean pastor we we have some different things going on matter of fact remember our power went out yeah power went out our, our church stepped up the unity yeah i've never seen that before I've been attending here a long time. Uh, different ministries, the various ministries. We had our women's ministry and they had their pure word. Hundreds of women. Uh, and our men's ministry, just the different things that we see going on. For me, it's exciting. It is to me too. And uh, and so, you know, as as, you're, as we plug through these four, 41 years that you've been plugging through and you look at what the Lord's continuing to do, what? What response do you get from that, Pastor? Well, you know, I, I, I see that ministry is like planting seeds, and sometimes some seeds sprout quickly, and sometimes it takes a while for them to produce. And, and uh, I think we've seen that here in this fellowship. There are, there are those things that in the orig originally in the church when we, we first began back in 1981, there are things that are, are just now uh, showing the strength of the fruit that they that they bore. You know, when we first began, for example, um, in '81, I didn't uh, I did not start a woman's ministry through my wife Marie. I didn't start a woman's ministry for a year. Uh, I concentrated on uh, trying to raise up men to teach men in 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 um, mentoring classes and all to uh, to learn to serve the Lord together and and so that fruit shows itself in the various things that we see taking place right now it has shown itself in the um, volunteerism of our men you know we've had uh, for example we we're having work done right now on our chapel and uh, our chapel um, needed new carpeting and painting and all of that well just this last week, you had 20 men or so show up from our men's ministry, the leaders really, and they they tore all the they brought all took all the chairs out of the chapel. The chapel has over 780 chairs, you know, and and they came and removed them all so that that the carpet could be replaced. These men did it in like an hour and a half or two hours. These these are the things that our men do for us that show the fruit that we've been working in their life for a long time. You know, sadly, there are fellowships, churches that don't have men's ministries. They don't have men equipped, men on their own. They'll go out on their own, which is a good thing, and they'll go to a restaurant or whatever, gather together, and they teach one another. But sometimes those men who are teaching other men things concerning the Lord are, are, are really not seasoned or knowledgeable of Scripture, and so they give their opinions or ideas and they talk amongst themselves without anybody there who has a substantial knowledge and ability to communicate scripture to make sure that uh, that at least the conversations 
are edifying and correct. They many times they don't. They just have somebody there who feels like he likes to talk, and and uh, he ends up giving information that is just not correct. And that happens uh, often enough to be a bit dangerous. And but they they don't have any any men's ministry in their church, so they gather together. That that happens. Or there are women's ministries that. I'll never forget, uh, for example, a, a woman who said to me at a woman's retreat many years ago now, but it's still true to this day, how, how she started crying when she was speaking to me, and she said, um, I'm just so blessed. She says, I don't go to this fellowship. I go to another one, but we would never be able to have an entire Friday, Saturday, and Sunday retreat because if, if the women are gone on Sunday, church will not happen. Mm -hmm. You know, so I've heard those things. And so, yeah, I think over the years, pouring into our, our fellowship, the, uh, the understanding that we're equipped to do works of service, that, that teaching is to develop discernment so we're not to, tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and slight cunning of men, that we should be growing up in our maturity. Well, our maturity is not just in our capacity to explain Scripture. Our maturity is in our capacity to explain and do scripture, right? And so that's been the emphasis here. So for 41 years, we've been doing that. And I think at this moment in this season, I don't think I've been quite as refreshed, John, to be honest mm -hmm. with you, as I have been lately. Because I'm, I'm of that age to begin wondering, am I to hand the reins of this ministry over to some somebody else who has energy, vision, and capacity to to move us on until Jesus returns. I, I don't have a sense of that at this moment. As a matter of fact, I have a reignition of um, certain passions and and uh, things that, that I had in the original days when I was 30 years old when this church began. And so I, um, I, I'm i feeling very good about it. I, I believe, you know, and, and this is, let me brag on our, on our, our people here. I believe our worship ministry is maturing and it's very edifying. It's not a, a show. We don't take auditions to try and get the very best or, or plunder other people's ministries so we get theirs. And we raise them up here and the ones we've raised up here are are, are anointed of the Lord. And, and so I'm blessed by the worship ministry. I'm blessed by every every element in our children's ministry and, and every element. We have 40 or 50 different ministries that are transpiring and and every one of those ministries that I, I can see and look at observe, I, I'm, I'm pleased in many ways in its direction and the fruit. And so, yeah, you know, we did celebrate our 41st anniversary, and I thank God for 41 years that he's given me permission to and, in, 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 and empowered me. But I, I, as I've shared with you many times, John, I, I couldn't have done anything by myself. I needed God's help, obviously, but I needed his men and his women. And God has supplied those men and women. And and yes, some of us are growing older. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, you know, but like Caleb, you know, Caleb's looking at the promised land and he turns and says, give me a mountain. You know, I, I don't want to just take my ease. I want to I want to go. I want to go on. I want to do things as unto the Lord. And he was 80 years old. <laughs> So you know, I, you know, you can have churches that are filled with men who say, "Oh, there is giants. There are giants in the land. It's just too hard for us, and we're grasshoppers in our own sight as well as in their sight." Or you can have men like Joshua and Caleb, who say, "You know what? I still have strength. I'm not. I'm not done yet. Give me something to do for God." And we have quite a number of men here, John, and women here, that have that heart. And so, God has blessed Marie and me so much, John. We. You know, I can't go out and have coffee with everybody. I can't spend a lot of time on a personal level. It just doesn't happen. We we still have a good amount of people in our fellowship in spite of COVID and in spite of the fear that many people felt through it. And even now, the fear that some people have to this day and the constant brainwashing of the of the press and oh we're gonna it's gonna be worse and you gotta and these people are believing the press even though they can see with their eyes that this is not taking place. It's not taking place, and there's some things coming out right now that are demonstrating that much of what was being said indeed was intended to, uh, to be air to keep people in bondage. We're seeing that right now. It's coming out in the news. Not all news sources will speak of it, but it's there, and it's real. And so I think it's time for the church to regather. I think it's time for those who've been, you know, afraid to go to church or whatever, don't want to come into a church service, it's time to return. 
you know, we have people in our fellowship that most definitely it's time for them to return. It's not good that man should be alone. They need to have fellowship. They need to have a place to, to, to receive communion, you know, not just eat a piece of bread and drink some juice while we're doing it here. They need to come. They need to be involved, in it, and I hope that they come back soon because we miss them, and they're missing out on what God wants to do in their life. Amen, amen, and yes, and, you know, Pastor, recently, even before the, we celebrated the 41 years, it just seems something seems different with your teachings. It, they're, I talk to my wife. I talk to other guys in the church, and you know they'll they'll text me. Pastor's on fire, and I'll have the you know and and uh, and there has been a, a a depthness to your teachings that I've uh, it, it just seems to get deeper. Is more the time I'm here at the church. What has changed? Nothing. I think what what has if anything could be. Um, looked at and said, oh, you're doing things different, differently. I, I would say this, I would say that uh, I, I, I want to give the Word of God in, in a deeper way than, than before. I'm, I'm wanting to, to add, add um, depth to the teaching. Um, I'm not hurrying through the passage. I'm not giving just a lot of stories or illustrations, which is the way I teach anyway. But I'm trying to fill it with more biblical information than ever before, and I'm, I'm being refreshed on my own uh, through these things. And so, I would just say that the Lord has placed it on my heart to to give more. Um, in my previous days, I've always used notes, and and I would use in my previous ministry years uh, three pages of notes. Now I use eight pages or nine pages because I'm wanting to give more depth to and information and I think you see that plus there's a a, a sense of um, of a purpose I, I know that my time is coming to an end I know that should the Lord return we go with him but should he should he not come in in my lifetime uh, I'm aware of that and so I kind of feel more and more that 51 uh, years of following Christ 49 years of teaching the word I want to pour it into people, and if they're willing to come and hear a Bible study, you know, they'll get one here. Some places you can go and you'll get entertained in one form or another. Sometimes the things that you're being entertained by are actually biblical sometimes. A lot of times they're not. A lot of times it's just the opinion of the pastor or his pet doctrine or his, his, his fears or ideas or whatever. Um, you know, everybody has his own way of approaching how he how he ministers to his his sheep, but I have this knowledge that uh, that I will give an account of myself. Mm -hmm. Hebrews thirteen seven uh, tells us that, and um, you know, and also uh, you know James chapter three verse one, various places. You know, we're to we're to be careful what we give to people and all. And so, from my perspective, I'm more and more inclined towards being very careful not to give people some something that that may agitate them and and infuriate them and then you know provoke them and then i use them as my illustration to tell others of how wonderful i am and that happens that happens i want them to walk out of here saying how wonderful christ is i really do and i've always done that i mean that's why we have on our on our uh, in our sanctuary the words we would see jesus I want I want to to be invisible, so that they might see the one who gives life, and and that's what it is, John. It's just more at this time than ever. I, I just know that that my time is coming to an end, and I don't want to to just fizzle out. I wanna I wanna go out in with uh, with a lot of uh, of, um, of 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 power and love that's what I want and it's and it's been evident in uh, in your teachings I mean our Wednesday night messages like last week on fathers who <laughs> and then this last week uh, on Sunday and what a great opportunity as you as you invited our church family to come back to church you know? yeah church family uh, Wednesday night tomorrow night we have service and as we're just discussing a little bit about what you're talking what you're preparing mm -hmm. uh, I would really encourage you guys to come on out tomorrow night and join us in worship and in God's word, and you know, Pastor, thank you so much again. You know, it's 41 years that you've been, you and Marie have been faithful to our church, and 
and faithful in shepherding us. And, and one of the things that's interesting that you point out really quickly is that you guys must have known that there was going to be a perseverance that you may or may not see the fruit. And now you're seeing the fruit in a lot of ways and, and the years of perseverance that you and Marie have done laying your life down for our church. And, uh, and but empowered by the Holy Spirit to do so. You know, I'll be honest with you, and we will close with this because we're going long, but I'll tell you this, John. Um, in the end, I, in the end, I, I don't know what to expect. I, I, I only want to hear well done. Um, there are things that you have poured into somebody's life that you will not live to see the fruit of. You just won't, because Jesus will take you home. There's nothing bad about that. But you won't see it. But that fruit lasts, right? So for me, that's how I do ministry. I, I believe that the day's going to come when I go home, but my reward follows. And uh, so, yeah, we've seen our ups and downs. I've seen our church three times the size of it that it is now. I've, I've I've seen it from nothing. I've seen it grow to something. I've seen it go back to hardly anything, especially with COVID. Then I've seen it slowly building back. So I don't do it for the numbers. I, I, I do it for the fruit. And, and whatever that fruit may be, I want it to last. Amen. That's the way it works. Pastor, thank you so much for sharing with us. And, and I jokingly said on our 41st anniversary, 41 more years. Nope. I won't even be here. <laughs> nope. I don't think I'll even be here next year. Probably not <laughs> next week. <laughs> oh, thank you, Pastor. And thank you guys for tuning in. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you on Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. Come out and join us. And then again, we have services on Sunday at 8.30 and 10.45. Yep. Uh, thank you, Pastor, again. God bless you guys for tuning in, and we'll see you soon.